I should stop playing this game. I have spent a whopping 1.3 thousand hours over a dozen colonies. But here we are on another Oxygen Not Included video. Good day! I'm continuing from the previous video and I have now reached beyond cycle 3000. For this video, I'll only cover the improvements, namely the improved pip farm, the water cooling system, the backup generators, and the automated rocket refueling station. Let's start with my pip farm. Let's start with the poopy water coming from my lavatories and showers. It gets stored in this liquid reservoir and overflows into my poopy water tank here on the right. The dirty water feeds all the arbor trees and regulates the temperature. The trees produce food for the pips which in return provides dirt for the trees. Now the pip eggs, meat, lumber, and excess dirt are sent into the nursery down here. The nursery is a no duplicate zone. Only arbor trees and pips are allowed here. The eggs are left on the ground to hatch while lumber, dirt, and meat are ferried off to the kitchen. When the nursery exceeds 50 pips, the pathway to the drowning chamber is open and you know what happens here. On the other side of the nursery is another door that only opens when a pip chamber has less than 8 pips. The hound is monitored by these critter sensors. These signal to open the door to the wrangling chamber. This critter drop-off is set to wrangle any critter inside this room. Now this critter sensor forces this door to close when at least one critter is inside. Ideally, only a maximum of one pip would enter, but oftentimes we get extra. Those extra pips would be manually delivered to the drowning chamber. It takes time to deliver a wrangled pip to the correct chamber, and in that time, this door would open. So I put a filter gate right here to prevent the door from opening. Just below the pip chamber is a little heat exchanger between water from the desalinator and lukewarm poopy water from my tanks. I needed to raise the temperature of the poopy water for my pinch of pepper plants. The clean water gets electrolyzed and the excess is delivered to my unified cooling system. I've replaced my series of cooling chambers into this one monolithic cooling block. Same as before, it's all thermium metal tiles with gold radiant pipes. Four aqua tuners are in charge of cooling the block, while one is for cooling the seven steam turbines. Previously, there were only four steam turbines and those weren't enough to keep the aqua tuners cool. Seven did the trick. By sealing them off in insulated tiles, we're no longer wasting energy to cool the environment. The water can come in at 90C and leave below 5C. All that water is stored in this insulated water tank. Its chill is preserved until needed. This supplies the water to my toilet, showers, and farms. Next up are my secondary generators. Primary is still the solar panel array, while the secondary now includes these natural gas generators. The natural gas comes from the oil well and from this natural gas geyser nearby. Before, all these petroleum generators share a single line. And when they run continuously, the last one eventually stops because not enough petroleum reaches it. Each petroleum generator has its own dedicated tank now to minimize supply interruption. The primary generators will eventually kick in before these become empty. These two generator types produce lots of carbon dioxide and poopy water. The poopy water is collected and delivered to these water seams. The byproduct of these seams, the polluted dirt, is consumed by the wild poke shells, which in turn poop out sand and used by the sieves to continue filtering. The water from the sieve is used by the carbon skimmers to suck out all that carbon dioxide, which again enters the cycle. Excess water is basically delivered somewhere else. So this is the improved rocket refueling station. The liquefying chambers are still the same, but the piping is different. You see here now that the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen both have their own main loops. The loop is, well, it is a loop. The pump delivers the liquid through the loop and then just returns it back to the chamber. 
the main loop passes through a series of liquid shutoffs. Basically, when a liquid reservoir hits its low threshold, it sends a signal to its associated liquid shutoff to divert the liquid from the main loop to itself. When the rocket needs to refuel, it sends a signal here, which gets buffered and closes these mechanized airlocks so that the reservoirs would release their liquids. The signal is either triggered by th these switches or through the space scanners waiting for them. That's basically the main gist of the circuitry. It's really not complicated. And that's it. I'm hoping to stop playing this addicting colony simulator and get back to having a real life again. As if I had one in the first place.